Every time I see her face, I don't know, guys. I don't know. Hello, welcome back to another Princess Connect video. I'm Lace, and today we're going to be talking about hard mode farming priorities. So this was actually made by another content creator, Vulcan. I'm just going to be doing like a quick review because I don't completely, completely agree with all of this. I, I agree with some of it and it's kind of already put together. So I was like, it's just some critique. You know, I'm not throwing shade on the guy. I just have some different opinions. That's it. Let's just jump into it. But before we actually go through each character and their positioning on the list, I guess I just want to make the assumption that you have pretty much built out three R7 fully refined teams it's kind of the prerequisite before you start hard mode farming and you can kind of do it like along the way whilst you're farming like but just towards the end your three princess arena teams are a higher priority than this so get those guys done or at least get them kind of on the way before you start hard mode farming so this tier list got a little bit of criticism as well on the reddit post where it was posted i agree with some of it i don't agree with all of it but for the most part this is where my headspace is at there is going to be characters that you don't know are good until the very end right like i'm talking about the six stars one and a half years later Later. There are also different characters that will take longer to mature than the others, right? So for example, Shiori only has one stage to farm, whereas Kokoro has two. And probably the biggest criticism that I agree with is that this is not, it's not tailored towards either clan battle or for arena. And as we all know, clan battle and arena are completely different beasts. Yes, there's a lot of overlap, but for the most part, you're going to be focusing on some characters over the others, depending on what you choose. With that being said, let's jump into it. First of all, I see Saren, 2-3 up here. The first thing I think when I see Saren or Shizuru or Ninon is that three stars are going to take a massive time investment before you can actually get them and play them. Combined with the fact that they only have one stage, you won't be seeing these girls for months. That was mainly a criticism on the three stars placement. It's again, my headspace is that we have the clairvoyance. We know what's in the future, but the order in which you farm each of these girls is completely, oh, and Yuki's a dude, my bad, my bad guys. But again, the order in which you actually farm them completely matters, right? So in the first six months, we're going to be looking at the priorities for the UE people and potentially clan battle as well in the next six and so on and so forth right and then one and a half years for six star so the moment i say that you see ray just drops down to the very bottom for me akino also drops down oh she's already bottom tier but i digress sorry guys let's just go back to saren so saren she's a three star she's only fumble via one stage she does have the dual purpose of both clan battle and arena however being a three star natural she's good enough at three stars for arena but if you do intend on using saren in clan battle you do need to star her up and at one stage you already know like that's that's gonna take forever shiori shiori is a powerhouse for clan battle maybe not so much arena she's okay but she really is like a really good clan battle unit at two stars five three one stage she's okay and i Obviously, again, guys, there's going to be more stages that come out, right? But for now, I think Shiori is a decent hard mode farming priority. I don't know if it's an everyday one. And this everyday kind of tag here, there were a couple of people that had the criticism of like, you can't expect us to farm all of these shards in one go, right? Every day, like we got to like upgrade characters and stuff. And that is why I made the assumption at the very start that you have your three arena, your princess arena teams already built because I'm probably farming about this many actually. And sorry to digress again, but it's probably going to happen a lot more times. Next, let's go to Cockroach. So Kokoro, so I think Kokoro is very, very useful. So Kokoro and Yui both at one star, combined with Pekrin, all of them can be starred relatively easily, right? Three, four, five. Kokoro provides action speed, which is like, you know, it's applicable in a lot of places, both arena and clan battle. But the key point for farming Kokoro is actually in one of the Reddit posts. So credits to Irelia is love and Renko572 for these, but it's essentially saying that Kokoro is really essential for clan battle. Um, but the reason is, is because when she does the dash forward, I think you guys have seen it, usually she dies from it. <laughs> she actually jumps ahead of the tank and if you press the UB, she actually stays there. And combining this with the Kari, and we all know that Kari stands in front of everybody. If your Kari is taking damage, and then your Kokoro jumps in front and then she starts taking damage and you use the UB to make her stay there. Then Kokoro is then tanking. But not only that, Kokoro's UB actually heals herself. So she is actually a more appropriate tank than Kari. And I know this sounds a bit weird that the Kari is sitting in front, like, you know, and we're using a support, I guess, to even tank the front. But what you need to remember is that eventually we're going to be moving away from this tank paradigm, this, this tank meta, because clan battle is about damage. So eventually we're going to have like five damage dealers or big contributors to damage. So Kokoro, quite decent at arena, but really for clan battle, I would say she's an everyday farm. So not only that, and this also applies to the one stars that have several stages, but also because there are several stages to farm them, you'll actually get their value faster, right? Because you, you will farm Kokoro on average two times faster than you will farm Shiori. Next we've got Yui. Yui is pretty good. I don't know about for like clan battle or arena, like she's probably like eh, shaky, not, not overly good, but she's very solid for at least like story. Shizuru, the next one, 
someone. So Shizuru is decent. She's good. She's she's good. But I don't know if she's worth actually spending like all of this hard mode farming on. Again, you need 145 pieces to put together a Shizuru. And at only one stage, that's going to take forever. Lima, an interesting one. If you're a clan battler, you ignore Lima. You ignore this this one. However, if you're an arena player, you must have heard the stories and the triumphs of Lima in the other service. She's a big asset to the PvP, like the, the, the disrupt. Oh, and if you're high enough, you'll probably see her in like every other comm in Presence Arena because every comm has Miyako in it. So to top it off, I would probably say Kokoro, Yui, Lima can kind of stay in the everyday. Lima only if you're doing clan battle. So for the everyday section, I would say Kokoro, Yui stay in everyday. Lima stays if you are doing arena. And by doing, I mean focusing on arena. And so you're okay to kind of do a little bit worse in clan battle. Shiori, yeah, but maybe a little bit lower priority than some of the other ones down here. Saren and Shizuru, there's just always the chance that you're going to get them off banner, right? When you're going to roll for Jun or you're going to roll for like Somakiaru or Ilya or whoever. They're both not exactly critical to either clan battle nor arena maybe saren for like some like boosting tamaki but but yeah i would shift those two down let's go to stamina permitting ray down to the bottom reason being six star okay and i know like you should be farming for six star earlier but at one and a half years later she's not going to be making an impact up until then right it even takes like until she gets her yui to kind of even be decent and what people are forgetting is that there are going to be like double shard events there are actually events where we actually get a lot of the shards of the rest of these characters that being said ray definitely drops in priority so i would not not farm her now she just does not have enough impact even at three star even at four star even at five star unless she's your waifu in that case just close the video and go farm ray Ekerin. so again like early game ish she's okay she's quite decent she's a solid tank if you start her up which is why she's maybe not every day but kind of like you know in the in-between tier she's not going to see like any use in clan battle but she might actually see some use in arena yuki is a pretty big priority in arena so if you're going arena i would say like lima yuki are two of your top priorities and if we go on to ninon ninon could also be a priority too but Yuki and Ninon because Yuki, Ninon, Lima, all like really arena centric units. I wouldn't touch them if you're going for a clan battle focus. Now let's get on to the interesting ones down here. A lot of these guys down here are like the really important ones, especially these two over here. So the obvious two are Eriko and Shinobu. And the reason is because like Eriko is just, she's going to be a real beast for clan battle. Just just straight damage, big damage and nonstop damage. It's damage day and night. And then you got Shinobu who like does like you know, a lot of damage and a little bit of defense down. When she gets her UE, she actually brings so much value in the form of physical crit rate and physical damage. If I circle back to Eriko, her UE actually gives the same thing. So these two, very high priority in my opinion. Very, very high priority. For, for clan battlers, sorry. For clan battlers. So Arena, you guys can kind of ignore these two. They're straight physical damage dealers. They give you the big, big buffs, but they don't really offer the utility that the Arena players are looking for. Mimi, she's like, okay. She's okay in both like clan battle and an Arena. Even better when her UE comes out. But for me, she's not very like impactful she just does like a lot of straight damage kurumi aoi and misaki are all very very interesting ones checked out their ratings on the future servers they are with their ues uh, quite good and it's really odd to say but i can see it i guess because especially kurumi kurumi for arena guys arena she has a lot of utility especially in her ub and her little mini stun and obviously this is with her ue so this kind of puts her in like the first six months of potentially farming up until her ue not too much going on aoi i think does more damage especially with his venom for you UE. And guys, remember that Venom or Poison or whatever it is, this is actually true damage. This, so this ticking over time, it actually ignores magical defense and physical defense. So Misaki is a pretty interesting one. When she gets a UE, her skill one, I think, it actually decreases the action speed of the frontliners of the enemy team, which is really, really good. This makes her suitable in both clan battle and in arena. Mifuyu, Mahiru, I feel like they're not too good like if if mifuyu sees any use it's probably going to be in arena mahiru if you see her maybe she'll make it into the clan battle teams and the arena teams but a problem with mahiru is that there are a lot of other characters that actually do her job better and last but not least we've got akino who is at the very bottom tier list with rei akino is okay but she just kind of falls off and pales in comparison to everyone else but again a lot of you know that the six star versions of rei and akino are like boom to that i say remember we're going to have farming events we're going to be able to get their shards later the impact of these characters is going to be way later so we worry about that later right now we worry about the characters that are actually going to make an impact in the next maybe like three to six months so i'm talking maintaining your ranks in princess arena and battle arena i'm talking building characters for your clan battle and honestly that should take you up to like ue at least on the flip side if you're doing arena lima is a good priority yuki is a good priority ninon's a good priority saren as well maybe but that kind of sums it up so again quick summary saren not too high priority shiori medium priority okro yui high ish priority 
Shizuru low priority, Lima high priority if you're a clan battler, Ray bottom priority, Pekarin medium to high priority depending on if you actually have another tank or not, Yuki and Ninon high priority if you're arena battlers, Eriko Shinobu high priority especially if you're clan battlers, or arena players low priority, Mimi middle-ish priority, Kurumi, Aoi, Misaki all about mid to high-ish priority, Mifuyu lower priority but higher if you're arena, Mahiru not really, and Akino rock bottom with Ray until we're looking at six stars. Oh dear, that was a very long video. <laughs> and maybe I should make my own chart because it's actually quite different to the perspective that Vulcan has given. Again, not throwing shade on Vulcan. I'm just putting in my own opinions into this. So that brings us to the end of the video. So I've got a secret message for you guys. Yuki's a dude. If you could drop this secret message down below, I would really appreciate it. It just tells me that you've actually watched the video down to here. And it just makes it all worth it when I see all those comments that say that. So again, thank you for watching. If this has helped you, consider leaving a like, subscribe, follow, whatever button. But yeah, you guys have have a good day and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.